Have your Bibles, want to look at the scriptures we've been tonight. If you don't, it'll be on the board. Two passages, but there's only about seven verses in both of them. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that, but I'll just try to preach as the Lord lays on my heart. Maybe we'll go back to some of these. If you got your Bible, you can turn to Daniel chapter 5, put a picture there or something there to mark it, and then turn over to Acts chapter 9. That's where we're reading from. But tonight, the first one, if... Uh, Try to turn that fan off over there or give it to somebody else that needs it. It's getting a little cool. We worried about it being too hot today. And God sent rain. Amen. It's kind of cool things down, and I appreciate it. Amen. Praise the Lord. If anybody needs that fan where you're at, you can get it. Amen. But I don't think I need it up here, not right now anyway. But uh, these scriptures, read them with me tonight, right off the board. Daniel chapter 5. Amen. And, uh, you know... Uh, actually, the last verse, we don't even need to read the whole verse, but we can. But uh, later, I just want to get my message from the first two and a half verses of Daniel there. In the same hour, the Bible says, came four fingers of a man's hand and rode against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed. His thoughts were troubled, so that the joints of his loose loins were loosed and his knees smote one against the other. Amen. And maybe we'll just, for the sake of the message here, and you can look at that, but the highlighted part, let's just read that. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. Amen. And then he made them great promises of what he would do. Let's go to the next scripture. Amen. Acts chapter 9. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And he trembling, astonished, and astonished, said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And we'll stop reading that one right there and preach just a few minutes. We should not just be moved, but changed. Amen. Two stories here about one man that got moved and didn't change and one man that was moved and changed. I want to be the one that gets moved and changed, don't you? When God speaks to me, I want him to speak loud. Amen. And I want to understand that it's him. And I, I told God when I started preaching, I said, you know, if I know it's you, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. You know, and I've done some pretty radical, crazy things in my younger day. But I really felt like it was the Lord. Amen. And if I, you know, open air meetings, preached on the roof and rolled across the floors. I said this morning, run around shouting. And, uh, you know. I've just always been quick to be God. If it ain't going to hurt nobody, amen. I mean, you know, just try Jesus. He never fails, amen. And we should make it a point. And maybe before this message is over, you'll cry the same cry I'm crying. God, don't let me just be moved. Let me be changed, amen. Let me be changed. Let it touch my heart and make a difference in my life. Father, I love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of prayer. I pray that you'd touch us, Lord, in a mighty way, Lord, and touch our spirit tonight, touch our mouth to preach, touch these ears and mine too to hear tonight what the Spirit says to the churches. Lord, if it was important when you gave seven messages to Asia Minor churches, Lord, I believe it was important enough that you ended every message with he that have ears, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. I just believe that when we come together, if there's lost people, surely God wants to talk to them, but sometimes He just wants to talk to the church, Lord. We ought to have our ears turned up and tuned up, and the channel, the same channel God is preaching to us on, the spiritual channel, and see what God will do. Lord, help us to do that tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wave at somebody, shake hands, love somebody, uh, whatever you got to do. Amen. And if it's too cold, somebody could run the heat up. One, I see a lot of people covering up and cold. I want you to be comfortable because I'm going to preach to you tonight. Amen. 
And I want you to be comfortable while I preach. Tim might want to bring it up one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good tonight? Song said to give us so many blessings, undeserving. That's what we are. Amen. But I just believe that tonight. Read these scriptures, look at them, and and I just like to say, you know, uh, most of the time I keep my sermons on the computer. So I used to have stacks that was falling over in my office there, and so I started just uh, disposing of these when I get through. So if you ever want them to get the uh, notes, first come, first serve, I just have one. I can run you another copy off the computer, but if I want to go back to them, I can on the computer. And so a lot of times done a lot of digging, not only my digging, but sometimes I use other people's digging, what they've found out to be true. And you wouldn't be able to read my add-ons, my writing, but you just have to take my word for it that it's nothing bad. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As we look at these two stories in the Bible, one of them in the Old Testament, one of them in the New Testament, I don't know if I've ever preached like this with with joint scriptures like this, but I failed it to, to get the point across tonight that we should do this. You can see what happened to these two men, Belshazzar the king and, and Saul of Tarsus, uh, you know, who was going against the things of God. Both of them were. Both of them were going directly against the things of God, and they, in a lot of ways, were identical. There's just one thing that separates them in the end, the difference between being moved and not changed and moved and changed. Amen. And and I think it's important that we note that tonight. Amen. In the case of Belshazzar, he was doing something uh, that he knew was wrong. There's no doubt in my mind he knew that he was wrong. Amen. To do this. Amen. Uh, he was drinking and parting in vessels that had been dedicated to God. And that's why I preach so hard about churches that's changing tradition and ways that, uh, to me, I think they're doing things that God's not, God not pleased with, uh, taking the old landmarks down and putting up new ones, and I won't have to even go there. But I think that, uh, you know, that we need to be careful that we don't get caught in this trap as they did, doing things that they should not be doing in the Old Testament. We'll get to the New Testament in a minute. In the case of Saul, who was doing something that was directly, uh, that he directly knew was wrong because he knew that in his heart, I believe, that, that, the, that, the, that the church uh, was, was of God, that God had been there, but he was a rebel and he was against the things of God. And if you look at chapter 8, uh, you know, of the book of Acts, I believe it is, you know, yes. Uh, you'll see a little bit about Saul. The Bible says there in verse 1, if you wanted to flip back to it, you could if you got your Bible open. But And Saul was consenting unto his death. If you don't know what that is, Stephen had just been martyred. And, and one of the deacons, full of the Holy Ghost, standing up for what's right. And somebody withstood him to his face. Several people withstood him to his face as we were talking about this morning. At this time, there was great persecution against the church, which was at uh, Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and of Samaria, except the apostles. The apostles were the only one that was trying to hold this thing together. And, and that's what I think is so serious. And I may be a little scattered tonight, but I'm going to try to stay on track here. Uh, that, that's why that I get so concerned about the way I see the church world going today because if the preachers don't stand together to hold it together, it's in trouble. Amen. I'm telling you, the people can go crazy on us, but we better hold it together. And that's what they were doing in that day. And the apostles held it together. Amen. Uh, God is, is not overlooking anything like that and just letting it go. They had martyred Stephen. He died calling on God. And you know the story, and here uh, this man was here consenting to his death. He was putting his vote in. Amen. He was saying, it's okay. Go ahead and kill him. They don't need to let me kill some of them. Let me get some of them and take them to jail. That's what he was doing. People, and I want to tell you something. You may not like this, but people, whoever you are, in the church, out of the church, Christian, non-Christian, I've just got to say this because it's real serious as this year 
uh, you know, progresses toward an election. And I'll just say this and go on. But people who vote people in knowingly that they support gay rights and abortion will answer to God directly for doing that. Amen. You can just stand back and, and say it's okay if you want to. And that's all that he did. Uh, Paul, Saul didn't kill Stephen. The, the people did. But he consented to it. It was okay. And uh, you need to know that that's important. Amen. Uh, the way that he was going was not the way that God wanted him to go. And suddenly a light shone down from heaven. Amen. Uh, the basis of this message tonight is to point out that both of these men were moved at what they saw that day. Uh, but only one of them was changed. Amen. And I think it's important. I, I as a preacher, am tired of seeing people moved and not changed. Somebody hear me. I wrote this down before I looked the song up, so uh, you won't think I got it from the song. Amen. When you get this far, let me tell you something. When you, when you get to the place that you're moved, that means that you've been touched by the presence of God. That means you've been touched by the Spirit of God. Somebody hear me tonight. And uh, you, when, when, you're, when you're there, amen, I just want to say, go on. This could be the Holy Ghost dealing with you to do something amen when you get uh, moved but not changed amen when you get uh, touched or moved you feel the anointing sometimes just hearing a song it'll make the hair stand up on your arms or a message that somebody's preaching uh it's not just because it's cold or uh because you coming down with something sometimes it's the spirit of god trying to put fire in us and let us know that that we need to do what god is talking to us about and uh, we need to do that, and and we do that when we get when we get uh, moved, but not changed. Amen. That's what we do. We just shut God down. Amen. God may be trying to talk to you, and there may be a second message that'll 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 make it a little clearer to you. You know, if you don't shut God down the first time He tries to deal with us, the first time He tries to get us moved, we need to go ahead and get changed. We see this happening today. As I was studying for this message, I thought about when, uh, you, you know, one of our members, a great man of God that I love God. He wasn't a preacher, but he was so loyal to the church and to God. Jacobus passed away some five years ago. But when this happened, I, I want to tell you there was a picture taken. And some of you may have seen it. Some of you may not have seen it. But it looked like an angel standing over him right before he died. And Anybody that looked on it could not uh, dispute that it was an angel or something seriously strange from the other world. Amen. Wasn't nothing bad. It wasn't the devil coming to get him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I want you to know that. In this picture taken right before this picture, it was not there. And in pictures taken right after this picture, it was not there. God sometimes just gives you one shot. Amen. One time to see it. And even then, some people don't believe it. If it come up on every picture, they'd just said it was a flaw in the camera. It was a flaw in the lighting or something. But it was the same lighting before, same lighting after, and it just appeared one time. My point is, it was obvious there was something there. Somebody hear me. I, I know now how Nebuchadnezzar must have felt when he looked in the furnace. Different story, but you know what I'm talking about. He said the fourth one is like the Son of God. Amen. I mean, you know, he didn't have the knowledge I have, but I know about angels, and that looked like an angel to me, and I'm going to accept that it was to carry him over into that promised land. Uh, one songwriter, the root, sang, uh, how can there be sadness and gloom when there's angels in the room? Amen. And I'm telling you, you can be a little sad over what's going on, that a brother's crossing over, and, you know, we get, have so much of that sometimes we have it up to here but we're going to keep on getting it up to here till we go to the place where there'll be no more dying amen somebody hear me tonight uh, i know how he must have felt it looked like an angel to me i showed this picture and this is the po case in point I, I showed this picture if i said that right uh, everywhere and even had people who i'm not sure if they were christians or not uh, on more than one occasion would ask me to send it to their phone. Let them have it. They wanted it. Amen. Uh, but I can tell you tonight, I don't remember anybody 
changing their life by those pictures. But I saw a lot of people moved by those pictures. Amen. Somebody hear me. We're going to be responsible for that when we stand before God. The things that God sent our way to move us, if we don't let it change us, we're going to be in trouble. Somebody hear me tonight. I, I'm trying to just, uh, for the sake of time, proceed on, but I'm not in a hurry tonight. Amen. Both of these stories that I told you about tonight were dramatic scenes. Amen. In Daniel chapter 5, while Balthazar was tasting the wine and had golden vessels brought in from the temple of the house of God. He did all that deliberately. Nobody, that didn't accidentally, they didn't just fall out of the temple, amen, and end up in the ballroom. And uh, But he sent somebody after them, amen. You remember the story of, of Moses and Aaron when he come down off the mountain. He told them, uh, they come to him, and I'll hold my place right there where I won't get too far off on chasing rabbits. But you remember when uh, when uh, Moses was up on the mountain with God, and he took, God told him, said, you need to go down there to them people and see what's going on. And the people had come to Aaron and said, we don't know what's happened to Moses. He's been gone for a month or ever how long it was, and we don't know where he's at. We need you to take over. And uh, so he told them to go get the the rings and their silver and their, I mean their gold and put it in a pot and, and melt it down and they'd fashion uh, an, an idol and uh, they fashioned the calf and this calf come out and finally at, at God's bidding to Moses he come down the hill and he asked Aaron said what happened what in the world is going on down here I'm just paraphrasing a little bit he said those people put their gold in the pot and when it come out it was a calf. It didn't happen that way. Amen. It didn't happen that way. They fashioned the calf. They, he ordered them to do that. They did that at his bidding, and he fashioned his calf. Sometimes we just so quick to say, I don't know what happened. Amen. I don't know what happened in church. And sometimes when we're blaming somebody else, we all just sing the little chorus, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, no my sister, but me, oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Amen. And and so that was what happened. Amen. They were dramatic scenes that, that this wine that they were drinking were in vessels that he ordered to get brought in from the temple. Amen. That's what the Bible said. I read these stories over and over to make sure I had this right as I talked this into my computer and got them to do the typing for me. I didn't have enough time to get all this together, so I let somebody else do it for me. Amen. But I can tell you tonight that 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 he ordered this and brought them in from the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wife and his concubines drank in these vessels. Amen. Knowing that they was doing wrong. I just wonder sometimes, uh, you know, I, I just feel like shaking some people sometimes. And I feel like every once in a while God's going to shake some people. Let them see that they're going down the wrong way. Amen. Suddenly, real suddenly, there was, a, uh, there was handwriting on the wall, which was a man's hand. And all that was visible was the hand writing on the wall. Amen. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I just feel like that, uh, you know, that this man, uh, maybe we don't need to talk anymore about him right now because he disobeyed God and, and, and he died. In Acts chapter 9, Saul was journeying along his way doing his own thing. The Bible said, as he went, I believe the words was there. I'm looking at it in my Bible and just sharing with you as we go. But it, it says, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings, still doing what he was doing in chapter 8, verse 1, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went into the high priest and deceived him and, and desired of him letters to Damascus and the synagogue that if he found anybody in this way, the gospel way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And where we took off was verse 3, and it just simply says, as he journeyed, he, as he went. Going along, I'm sure he didn't have no plans of meeting God on the Damascus Road. Amen. I know a lot of people, Eric uh, Quinn, when, well, his testimony was that he was on a Monday night watching football, and, 
and had a beer in his hand and, and got in the hall, went in to get a beer and got back in to go to the TV and he's already in glory tonight. He's our Dallas pastor that just recently went to see the Lord. But uh, he said that God just spoke to him in an audible voice said, how long do you think I'm going to put up with this? Amen. Sometimes God just has to speak to us like that and say, how long do you think I'm going to put up with this? Amen. How long do you think I'm going to allow you to keep on doing your own thing, going your own way without having some retribution from me or from you to me to make you know that you need to get things right with God? Amen. And so that's what happened as he journeyed. Amen. Uh, he was on his way to do great things. Amen. Doing his own thing and was desired uh, for him to give him letters to the high priest, to, to give him letters that he could take these letters and have the authority, you know, uh, like, like a badge or a gun to do what he was doing. Whether they be man or woman, he might bind them and take them to Jerusalem. That's what the Word said. And this is exactly what he was doing as he journeyed on and he came near Damascus. Suddenly there shined around him a light from heaven. Saul fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul asked the question, Who art thou? Lord, with a question in verse 9, I believe he knew who it was. I believe he knew he had went as far as he could go. The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. Saul uh, then came trembling and astonished at what he saw and heard and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Uh, he stopped right there, just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the king stopped, Belshazzar stopped and said, get my astrologers in here, get those people in here to help me and see what we can find out about this handwriting on the wall. And when he all to turned it over and called for a preacher, amen, called for somebody that could give him some insight into what was going on. Those astrologers didn't know, didn't have no way of knowing, but he called uh, for them to come anyway. The difference in these two stories is that they did what they did after they saw the handwriting on the wall. Somebody say amen. It was what they did after this, amen. Uh, that, that is so important, and, and it's what they did after this that makes the difference, amen. Uh, we, we read that. In the case of Belshazzar the king, he called for his astrologers and soothsayers to tell him what this was and what he should do about that. In the case of Saul, who later was named Paul uh, because of his obedience to God, asked the Lord, what would you have me to do? In both cases, I think we could be fairly saying that God had enough. Amen. That God had enough of him parting around in vessels that was not supposed to be even out of the house of God. Somebody hear me. They were supposed to be used for sacred things, and God had had enough. They were both trembling but they both, uh, you know, made two different choices. One died that night, and there is not much more to say about that one. Amen. Other than this, to tell you this, that, uh, you know, I was talking to Betty about this story on the way back from uh, eating dinner with Charlie and Tim. I, I was talking to Betty. I said, you know, you'd have to research it. I said, but the astrologers couldn't do it, and he gave them the chance, and then Daniel had to be brought in to do it. And so I think it, it seems like this was a one-night deal, uh, like it was a one-day deal for him, but I believe in my heart uh, that, that it, that it was, was not. I believe time he got Daniel in there, and Daniel uh, told him the interpretation. I think it was at least a day or two, some days, had passed getting this all together. But you know what I'm saying with all of this is I believe that when God gave him this and he heard these words, they were certain things I don't think he could do anything about. God said, I've done took your kingdom away from you and give it to somebody else. There wasn't nothing he could do about that. You hear me tonight. But I think there, he, he, God gets personal in that vision. And, and Daniel says, he said, but you are weighed in the balance and found warning. And when he said that to him, I believe that was God saying to him, you need to repent. You need to call on God. But you know what happened? He did nothing. And you know what the Bible says? That night. 
Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. I'm telling you, why did that happen? Because he said it not, the instructions of God. God said in Proverbs, if you said it not, my instruction, and you said it not, all my reproof, he said, I will mock when your fear cometh, and I will laugh at your calamity. Amen. You can't picture God doing that. God can't picture us not serving him either. Is all he's done for us and how much he's done for us and the way he died for us and gave his life for us and blessed us, uh, you know, uh, more than we deserve tonight, more than we should have tonight. we got so many good things that we could just thank God all night for the personal things that we got, let alone the spiritual things that God has done for us and the moving of the Spirit that God has done. But if we want to walk away and say, hey, it don't mean nothing to me, I, I know who it is, he was more interested in what he got out of it that he got Daniel to tell him something that his soothsayers couldn't do, but he should have done something about it. I'm telling you, when you go to God's house and you hear the word of God and it pricks your heart and it gets you to the place that you need to do something about it, don't just be moved, be changed. Hallelujah. Let God come into your life and do something for you like he wanted to do for him, like Paul allowed him to do it. One man died the very night he heard uh, the, the interpretation of this writing on the wall. That he could not get nobody to tell him. A man of God told him. And he got mad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You remember when da Daniel. You remember when Nathan came and, and uh, told Daniel what all that he had done. Or told David all that he had done with Bathsheba. And the Bible said he warned him. He talked to him. Give him a little riddle. Rather than just coming out there and saying you, you're in trouble. He just told him. A, a, a summary of what had happened and he compared it to being lambs and one man didn't have but one lamb and, and this other man took his little lamb and you know the story I don't have it before me and I won't go too deep into that but I'll tell you that when he told him that when he told him all this and, and, and uh, da David got in a rage being the king he said bring that man in here bring him to me and we'll have him killed we'll have him put to death the Bible said uh, we we should not be trying to get the, the mode out of our brother's eye until we get the beam out of our eye. And if you hear that scripture tonight, Dan, David said, bring him to me. I'll get him killed. And the man of God said, thou art the man. You're the one. You're the one that took a man's lamb, the only one that he had. And you sat back in the castle. Don't think you're doing no wrong. Preachers behind pulpits tonight that's doing all kind of dirty things and things that God would hold them accountable and will hold them accountable for. Think they've got by. They need the Holy Ghost to get their church stirred up to let them realize they can't be hid anymore. I'm telling you, we need to sing it from our heart. God, it's not my brother or my sister. It's me. Me, me standing in the need of prayer. Amen. And this man died because he did what he did. And one of those men became a great apostle. Amen. The Lord said unto him, Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. And I'll be told thee what must do. And, and that verse 6 in, in the end of the scriptures that I read to you, but... Let me give you a little bit of the rest of the story. Uh, just uh, one will obey God. If just one will obey God, there's no telling where it will lead. Ananias. You know, I heard somebody preach on him recently, but it's hard to preach this story But about getting there and, and, uh, and, and him obeying God. And all the people that Paul reached, countless people that he preached to uh, that would have not happen if he had not been obedient to the voice of God. I'm telling you, we need to do that. Amen. Somebody hear me tonight. You know what happened? God came to Ananias, told him to go in the city, told uh, Paul to go in the city. I'll tell you there what I want you to do. And I, I think maybe he was thinking that God would open the heavens again and talk to him again. But God sent a man, Ananias, who reluctantly went to him. I believe it was a man of God when God told him to go. He said, God, I'm paraphrasing. You know who this is. You knew God. He knew God knew who it was. But he said, that's a mean man. Nobody's going to talk to him. He's like, I'll cut my head off when I go in there. He said, oh, no. He said, I've already told him you're coming. He said, you go over. I've took care of that. Amen. I've went before you. 
And so at the word of God, he went on before him. He got in there, prayed for him, and his his scales fell off his eyes. He'd been blind for three days. I told Betty yesterday, I said, sometimes God just gets people like that. Sometimes God has to get you like that before he can talk to you. Amen. If you could still, he'd been out. If he'd been in James Chambers, he'd still been out washing cars and cutting grass and doing all this stuff. But if I got struck blind for three days, I wouldn't have been doing none of that stuff. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. Sometimes God just has to get you where he can talk to you. Amen. You ever had parents? I've seen parents, and I've been a parent, and I've I've been a kid, and I, I, I know stories of where the parent would just get a hold of you and say, i got to talk to you about something you got to hear this. And I think God does us that way as children. Sometimes he just wants to talk to us. But we see what happened when he obeyed God. And I'm just telling you tonight, that's what ought to happen in our life. We need to quit uh, being moved and not changed, start being changed in our life. Uh, there was a song, and I got to listen to it while I was trying to button my shirt and put my tie on at uh, 5 or 10 after 6 and knowing that we had to come and get some riders in five, five after five, and, uh, you know, get here. We was running late, but Betty told me about a song she heard, and she didn't know how to get it. I told her just go in there and, and put a few of the words down, and somebody will pull it up, and that's what happened. But the name of the song, I, she thought it was moved but not changed, and the name of the song, there was some young girls. You ought to look it up and sing it because it's real sweet. Some About five or six it looked like young girls. Might have been sisters. I don't know who they were. But they were singing this song, and the name of it was Stirred But Not Changed. And I, I want to just read it to you. I heard the tune of it. It's not too complicated, but I won't try to sing it tonight. But I want to close with these words of this song. It says, Oftentimes my heart, verse 1, Oftentimes my heart has been stirred by the things that I have heard about so many who have never heard God's word. And though tears would fill my eyes, all too soon I'd realize, though my heart been stirred, my life has not been changed. Listen to the chorus. I'm so tired of being stirred about the lost who need to hear. I'm so tired of being stirred that about his coming being near. I'm so tired of being stirred till I cry bitter tears. I'm so tired of being stirred, but not changed. The second verse says, have I heard it for so long that he's, that, that he's just another song? Has the story lost its thrill that I once knew? Lord, give me a burden that's so strong that it will last when my tears are gone. I'm tired of what I've been. Lord, make me over again. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then they sang the chorus again. I'm so tired of being stirred about the lost who need to hear. I'm so tired of being stirred uh, that he's coming is so near. I'm so tired of being stirred till I cry bitter tears. I'm so tired of being stirred, but now, uh, but not being changed. And they had another course with it, and it said, but this time, Lord, change me to let work begin just now. Y'all come on back. I'm through. This time, Lord, change me. Please change me somehow. This time, Lord, change me. Let my life be rearranged. That's what happened to Saul, who became Paul. For I'm so tired of being stirred, but not being changed. Amen. You ought to be able to relate that to your life. You've heard me preach, heard other preachers preach. Marcia talked about going to revival. I encourage people to hear all the words you can. And Jimmy Jones, good man of God, good preacher as far as I know. I've heard him a few times. Touch my heart. But we ought to go hear the word. But how many times have we went and heard the word? How many times has God gave me something special uh, to tell you? You know, maybe I try to have a word every time I come into his house. But you know what I'm saying. Sometimes it's that special nugget that will touch your life like it did me when God told me when you get up in the morning, I'll still be God and the devil will still be the devil. He'll still be defeated and I'll still be God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need to look for those words. How many times have we got them and not too long down the road we'd be in a trial and a mess and we forgot about that word that we heard that would have got us out if we had put it in our heart and got, uh, got uh, changed and not just got moved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's important that we make sure 
that our life has been changed. That's what he come to do to change our life and to take out the old and put in the new. Any man being Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old stuff had passed away. Amen. Uh, that's just another reason that that it, you know, I, I, I talked to uh, the new preacher at Dallas, and if you want to hear him Tuesday night at Dallas, Brother Stack, Brother James Stack. But if you want to hear him, uh, you can go over there Tuesday night if you're able, and you'll see him preach. And at the end of the service, I'm going to let them vote on him, and I, I just know how that's going to go because they just love him, and he loves them, and he's preaching good. But I, I just covered some things with him. I said, I don't think pastors ought to stand up in blue jeans with their shirt tail hanging out and, and preach. I think they ought to have a little more respect than that to the house of God. He's been saved about 13, 14 years, I think. I might have the numbers wrong there. But uh, every time I saw him, he's had a suit on. He said, you don't know how many times I've been fought over this by the churches I went to. And, and they'd, they'd dress like you're talking. They'd tell me, that's not necessary. You don't need to wear no tie when you preach. He said, when God called me to preach, he said, I didn't have a suit. He said, but I went out and bought one because I felt like that was paying honor to the to the pulpit because back then not every preacher I heard preached like that he said but now it's gone the other way and they said well you just need to lighten up and go that way he said listen he said I came from the other side he said I know what it's like on the other side I know what it's like serving God and it's not an easy road that you're traveling to heaven and if that's the worst thing you ever have to fight is somebody fussing at you because you got a suit on think you better than somebody else that's not what it's about all at all amen it's about reverence in the house of God. Amen. I know preachers that go to church, go to hospital to visit people with shorts on. I think they ought to be ashamed. I think they ought to be ashamed. I, 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 I wear blue jeans during the week sometimes when I'm working around the house. And, and I, I used to work in a business that I had. And for three years now, I've, I've been just a full-time pastor. But I, I can tell you that when I, when I did this, you know, when... When I, I'd, I'd go to the hospital, you know, I'd go home and put something on that looked similar to a preacher. But he said, well, it don't matter what you got on. She was just telling me the truth. It don't make you a preacher to go put a suit on, you know. It don't change you. You know, I know that one of the men's clothing stores said clothes make the man, but it don't make the preacher. Amen. The preacher's what's called of God. Amen. And I can just tell you tonight, I told her, I said, you know what had happened? I hardly ever go to the hospital. Uh, and I don't go as much as I did. COVID about stopped a lot of it. I'm back to going. Don't have as many sick people as we used to have. I thank the Lord for that. But I go when I'm needed. But I told Betty, I said, just as sure as I go up there with blue jeans on, somebody's going to say, hey, Brother Chambers, come in here and pray for my mama. And take me in there and say, this is Pastor Chambers. Look like I just got out from under a car. I just ain't going to do that. I respect God's house and the place that he's put me in. But he told me, he said, you don't know how many times I've had somebody come against me for that. I said, brother, just let them keep coming. Keep on doing what you're doing, and you won't miss it. Amen. You'll be right with God. Amen. Uh, stand to your feet. Let him sing us a song. Fill me with love. Fill me with love. Make me a new. Make me a new. Help me to do.